Jeremy. David. Well, now, Cecil Parkinson, you're now chairman of a fertiliser firm. And how deep is the mess you're in at present? <laughs> well, I, th I think we're clear. I, I'm chairman of a number of other companies, too, by the way, and it's artificial fertiliser. That just seems the most appropriate Arti one. Art <laughs> artificial fertiliser, just for the record. <laughs> Chemical right. fertiliser. Um, very dangerous stuff to immerse oneself in. Well, I, I think that clearly we're not going to have a, a good evening. It's very early days. I would have thought it's fairly clear we will have a Labour victory. But uh, I think uh, I don't buy any of this analysis about disunity and so on. We've just been there for 18 years. It's 23 years since the Labour Party last won an election. Mm. And, and I think the mood that I found going around the country, people were saying, look, it's just time for a change. I was coming down in a train the other day from Birmingham, a couple of businessmen, businessmen said, look, I'm doing very well, but I just feel you've been there long enough. It's time for a change. And I think that that is the most emotive political uh, argument. And I think it's a very compelling one when a party's been in power for as long as we have. Well, here now is Cecil Parkinson, the former chairman of the Conservative Party. Mr. Parkinson, you know Mrs. Thatcher very well. You've run campaigns for her in the past. What can the party do to persuade the British people that she really does care? Well, first of all, I think that the Labour Party is making a very big mistake. Uh, they say they're not going to attack her personality, but there you hear Mr Gould talking about her background, saying it's narrow, that she doesn't understand people. He obviously doesn't know her at all. But what they're making quite clear to the British public is that they see her as a very formidable figure and that they've got to try to destroy her if they're going to make any progress. It's a compliment, in a way, that they're being so determined to attack her. Let me put the question another way. Is it an electoral liability, in your judgment, if she is perceived as not caring? I don't think that she is a person who doesn't care. It could be an electoral liability if she was perceived like that. I know she's a person who cares very deeply, but what she is, is a very determined person. And what the Labour Party can't stand is that for the first time, for a long time, they've run into a person who's as determined that we won't be a socialist country as they're determined to try to make us one. That's what they can't stand, her sheer determination. If it may be an electoral liability uh, that she is seen as not caring, the fact that an impression exists that she doesn't care is going to damage you, isn't it? I think most people realise that prime ministers can't walk around shedding crocodile tears and making wild promises because they can be called on to deliver them. Oppositions can, so they can prance around claiming that they care, claiming the Prime Minister doesn't. She can point to a record of doing things to help people who have real needs, the young, the sick, the elderly, which far outweighs anything they've been able to do. And she would say, look, as Prime Minister, my job is to try to deal with problems, to be effective, not just to wander around uh, talking compassion and care and concern. But try telling that to the people of Skelmersdale, for example. Well, there are problem areas and no one denies it. And how did Skelmersdale arrive in the first place? Because social engineers, left-wing social engineers, decanted thousands of people from their homes in Liverpool into this new town, Skelmersdale, and tried to create a bright new world. And it hasn't worked. It, Skelmersdale isn't a tribute to the caring Labour Party. Skelmersdale is an awful indictment of what happens when you get social I use engineers. I it really as a microcosm yes, for well, the three, mil it. three million unemployed. Try telling it to them. Well, I think those three million unemployed recognise, if I may say so, that the, the reasons behind their unemployment are very complex. I remember in the 1983, 80, we fought the Birmingham Northfield campaign. Unemployment had gone up from 8 to 18 percent in Northfield. Our opponents thought they were on to an absolute winner. They said, isn't it a scandal that so many former car workers are out of work in Northfield? Ladywood used to be the most efficient car plant in Britain. The truth of the matter was, when we said, you know Ladywood was overmanned, you know it had no future unless there were changes, we were seen as the people who knew what was happening, and our Labour opponents were seen as the people who didn't know what was happening, who weren't aware that it was overmanned and inefficient. I think the public understands uh, the causes of unemployment are very complex, and I think the public sees the figures moving down, and they'll continue to move down now. Mr Parkinson, thank you. Pleasure.